Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create three creative editing transitions. You guys really enjoyed my previous editing transition video inside of DaVinci Resolve so I decided to create another one just for you guys. If you're new to this channel hit the subscribe button and notification bell to stay notified for my next upload. If you enjoyed this video give it a like and if you have any suggestions for tutorials in the future let me know in the comments below. Also, follow me on my social media. The links will be in the description below. I tend to post a fair bit of behind the scenes of what I'm working on. And, you know, if you guys are interested in that sort of stuff, definitely follow me on my social media. So with the first transition, you can see that there's a couple different elements. I'm just gonna zoom in. So you can see that the image is being distorted and pulled down and it flashes in and the next clip drops into frame. Now, let's just add these clips in. I'm just going to move it over here. Um, I've already got it pre-selected. This one and then this one. This transition was inspired by Dope Motion's After Effects tutorial. So I'm just going to be recreating this inside of DaVinci Resolve for you guys. So I'm just going to go to the first clip and it's very similar. I'm just going to go to Fusion. It's very similar to uh, my previous video, the glitch transition, because we're going to be adding a displacement map. The links to the displacement map will be in the description below for you guys to download and follow along. So I'm just going to add a displacement map 3 in. I'm just going to shift space. I'm going to add a luma key. Oop. I'm going to add a luma key. I can't spell today. Sorry guys. Luma key. Um, and then I'm going to go to media in. I'm going to go shift space again. I'm going to add a displacement map. I'm going to make sure the luma key is pick whip to the foregrounds. As you can see it's distorted a little bit and now I'm going to add shift space. Go to media one shift space and I'm going to add a transform. shift space. I'm going to add another transform. Now the reason why I'm adding two transforms is because we want to add a, a transform distortion without distorting the um, displacement map. So I'm just going to go to transform. We're, we're only going to be animating these three nodes. So I'm just going to go to transform one. I'm going to go towards the ends transform one and I'm going to add the pivot points Y. And I'm going to make this um, green X go to the top of the image because we want to make it drop down. So you can bring it to one. The green X will go to the top of the frame and then I want to add a keyframe to the aspect. I'm just going to uh, zoom in a little bit just so I can see the keyframes a little bit better. And I'm just going to go towards the ends and I'm going to adjust the aspect so you can see it's getting pulled down. I don't want to distort it too much, but I think here's fine. I'm going to go back to this frame and now I'm going to go to displace and I am going to adjust the keyframe for center and refraction strength. I'm actually going to start the refraction strength at zero just so we don't see any distortion at all. And then I'm going to go to the end frame. And then I'm just going to adjust the refraction strength. I might go a bit more than one. Because one is, oh, okay. Yep, here's good. And then I'm going to adjust the Y axis. You want to make it drop so you can see now it looks like it's dropping. And now you can see it's the animation's dropping. I'm just going to go to transform 2 and I'm going to go back to I'm just going to go back to the first keyframe and I'm going to go to center and I'm going to make a keyframe there. Then I'm going to go towards the end of the frame again. 
and I'm just going to adjust the Y, but I'm going to make it drop. So I'm going to have it about here. The only problem with doing this is now you see the alpha channel behind it. To get rid of that, we want to go to edges and we go to wrap. You can use wrap or mirror, which is my preferred. I prefer the um, wrap method for this one. And I'm just going to go to the settings and I'm going to add motion blur. I'm just going to bring it up to 10. Just so there's a bit of motion to it. So that's pretty much the first clip done and we need to do this to the second clip you can add these um, you can save these as a preset but I'm just gonna start it from scratch so I'm actually gonna skip me re-importing all of these again up until I've added all these transform nodes into the second clip and then I'm going to continue on from there so now we're continuing on from the previous clip so we want the distortion to already be happening so I'm just gonna go into the transform and I am going to adjust my pivot point and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my pivot point so the X is now at the bottom of the clip bring it to zero and I am going to adjust the aspect and I'm going to have it already distorted so I'm going to bring the aspect up so now you can see it's distorting that way and I'm just going to go over a few frames quite a few frames and then I'm going to bring it back to default, which you can click the um, little dot underneath the slider and I'll bring it back to default. Now I'm going to go to displace and I'm going to go back to the first frame. I just find it easier to work this way. Um, so go to displace first frame and I'm going to add keyframe for the center value and the refraction strength. I'm going to adjust I'm going to bring it to negative so it's starting from a higher position and it's going to drop back into frame. I'm going to bring the refraction strength up a tad. I might actually bring this down. Oops. Yeah. And then I'm going to go to the other frame. I'm going to zoom in again just so I can see the keyframes better. Make sure it's lined up with this one. And I'm going to bring this back to zero just so there's no distortion at this point to zero. And I'm going to bring this back uh, to 0 0.5. 0 0.5. So now it's back to normal. So now you can see it's distorting and it's dropping back into frame. If we want to, we could actually have a bit more of a distortion. I'm going to distort it a little bit more. Cool, and then transform to. I'm going to go back to the beginning, and then I'm just going to adjust the center keyframe, and I am going to adjust the Y axis. And now I'm going to make it start from the bottom about here is fine and then I'm going to go to the end frame and I'm going to drop it back to 0.5 so now you can see it dropping into frame I'm just going to add a motion blur to this one and we're pretty much done here um, don't forget to wrap the edges so then it just duplicates the frame a bit now it drops into frame we can add another um, element to it. We can go to generators. We can go to solid color. And let's just drag this on top. And then we want to select the clip, select the solid color, then go to inspector. And we're going to change the color from black, make it white. You can choose any color you want, but um, I just like the simple white flash transition look. And I'm going to adjust it to add I'm going to bring the opacity down. I'm just going to have it at zero. I'm going to animate it on. So I'm just going to click the keyframe and I'm going to go over to the cut point and I'm going to bring it up. I'm not going to bring it up all the way just so it's bright enough. And then I'm going to go to the end frame. I'm going to bring it down to zero. So now we've got this bright flash of light to help 
blend in the transition. I'm just going to add my clip in. I'm just going to add a bit of color. All right, I just did a very quick color correction and I'm going to do a cut point here and another cut point about here. And I'm going to select these two cut points and I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to new fusion clip and these will combine the two clips into one. Now let's go over to the fusion tab and let's add in shift space a transform node and now let's go to the very beginning of the frame and we are going to adjust the center keyframe now let's go over to the end we're just going to adjust the X axis you can make it go any way you want but um, now we've got a little bit of a problem very similar to the previous transition we can go to canvas and we go to wrap and it creates almost like a never-ending stream of clips so I'm just going to bring the center over a few rotations and you want it to stop at a 0.5 just so it fills the frame now let's play it back and now we've got a few rotations happening. Now let's blend this in with some motion blur. Bring it up to 10. Now we've got this cool whip pan transition. Now let's adjust how it animates and make it a bit smoother and make it slow at some point. So let's go to the spline, check the transform just going to bring it over and I am going to add a little bit of a curve. There we go. And I'm going to go back to edit and that's pretty much the whip pan transition. Let's go to our final transition for this video and that's the camera shake transition. Now this transition is as simple as the previous transition, the whip pan transition. Um, so let's just go to this clip and drag it in. I'm going to have to add some color into it so just bear with me. Alright, so now I've added a little bit of color to it. I'm going to start the camera shake about here and then going to end it just here. So these are the two cut points. I'm going to select the two cut points and I'm going to create a new fusion clip. Again this will combine the two shots together and I'm just going to go to the fusion tab and I'm just going to go shift space and I'm just going to type in camera and then go to camera shake. Let's add that in. If we play it back now, you can see that there's an alpha channel behind. Similar thing as the other transitions, you can go into edges, canvas and wrap. Um, for this one, I like to use the mirror just because it kind of smooths out the edges of the frame to make it look seamless, which is kind of what I want from a camera shake instead of doing it super stylized. And I'm just going to bring this back to the beginning. I'm just going to be adjusting four things in the camera shake and you can adjust other things as well but this is just a quick go-to thing for this tutorial so make sure you're at the beginning and I'm going to add keyframes for the X deviation, the Y deviation, rotation deviation and the overall strength and since it's the beginning I'm just going to turn these all the way down. Now I'm just going to go over a few frames. I'm going to see where the cut point is. So it's about here. So I want to turn everything back up to default. And then go over a few frames. Let it shake. 
And then I'm going to add another keyframe point to these. Then I'm going to go over a few more frames. Oh, I'm actually going to go towards the end. And I'm going to bring everything back down to zero just so the camera shake turns on and off just for a smooth transition and of course we're gonna add some motion blur to help sell the camera shake effect it slowly animates on the camera shake and then it gets really intense and then it switches over to the next clip and then it slows down and now that's the camera shake transition if you enjoyed this video give it a like if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads. And I will see you guys next video.